And welcome to the good, the bad, and the what the fucks for Nicolas Cage. The final one, no final one. Now I did believe that Nicolas Cage, the good, the bad, and the what the fucks would be the last one. Done, dusted, done, gone, okay? Mainly because I know Nicolas Cage film collection underneath my bed is huge. It is, it's literally like, again, I've been putting this series off for ages and I didn't want to do it. I thought maybe he's got the Scott Atkins one out of the way, maybe he's got a Sloan one out of the way. But we're going for Nicolas Cage because a guy I know who's been bugging me for about two, three years says he had this. And I was like, all right, yeah, whatever. <laughs> but nice, nice guy, called Dave. Um, and I decided to get this for Matthew for his birthday. Because again, I'm running out of space. And uh, again, I got it. And it is, it is, how to start the good, the bad, and what the fuck, God knows what the first one will be. But this is Voodoo Child, signed by Nicholas Cage and Weston Cage. Um, what are Weston Coppola? Um, as I said, they're all signed down there as well. Um, but yeah, it's as close as we might ever get to having Nicholas Cage on Lonely Tree Entertainment if someone's signed by him. Um, I would love it in my collection, but I think, like, Given that to Matt and knowing how much love that will get for his birthday, which is obviously inbound as well, so it's good timing. And again, I'm going to sort that out. It'll not be the last time you see that because I'll be hunting Matt down and uh, in the meantime, watching some Nicolas Cage films. So welcome to the very end, the very last Nicolas Cage, the good, the bad and the what the fucks. And I'm going to try and not make it as up as Bruce Willis at the two hour mark. But again, if you want to watch this, you watch it. You want to hear me waffle, you can hear me waffle. But remember this, it's better than fuck all. Enjoy this video. Hello. So, Nicholas Cage here. So I don't know how we've never got around to watching Colin 60 Seconds. Maybe it's because I probably didn't own it. And when I think about that, fair enough, it's now touchdown pictures and touchstone pictures. But, like, why is Gone 60 Seconds is not available on Blu-ray? It has been out there but disappeared. Um... Quite a hidden gem, I would say. Uh, you know, there's not a lot goes on. It's not, like, action-packed, but it's just so well made. And it comes on the era of, like, you know, the Jeremy Bruckheimer era where shit hot off of the rock, shit hot off Armageddon, shit off of the fucking stick, you know. And it's massive cast. Angela Jolene, like, ma just on the edge of being a mega star. Vinnie Jones, you know, they're taking... Vinnie Jones is just exploding in England with lock, stock and snatch. He comes into it. The, the, the entire support cast, Timothy Onderfont's in there, Delroy Lindo, like the voice of reason, he just disappeared after the 2000s. Giovanni Ribsy on his rise as well, so it's really, really well, uh, Dr. Fucking Who's in it, really well edit, uh, directed cast, and just a fun movie, you know what I mean? A bit ludicrous when he, you know, like literally car jumps the entire Golden Gate Bridge to get away at the, uh, the end with Eleanor. Um, but, you know, Nicolas Cage rocks it, you know what I mean? This is, like, huge film for what it is. Um, as I said, it's... I don't know why it's not been in my collection. It was just everywhere. Big rental movie. Nicolas Cage has arrived at this point. He is literally, like... You know, it's again, it's not a full-on action movie. Um, again, it's laugh out loud. The way they use DMX with a Hummer. You know, constant, like, loads of different characters. And I think they're really well coming out well. Um, so it's great to start this Nicolas Cage off by saying this is a good film. Again, great artwork, front cover, um, as I say, Angela Jolene has probably never looked as hot as she does in this. Um, Dominic Senna, but yeah, Jeremy Bruckheimer movie, and yeah, Christopher Eccleston, that's the Doctor Who there. But yeah, it's done, it's dusted, we're started, and there's not that many. When I literally went under the bed, if you're watching the Bruce Willis one, there's two trays. We've got a Salome, we've got an Atkins, and maybe it's an Eddie Murphy at a stretch, a John Cusack. So there's not going to be loads in this entry. I will be buying Renfield, though, by the end of this, because I haven't got around to buying Renfield yet. But yeah, Nicholas Cage, good, bad, and what the fuck, and we start with a good one. So, it's nice and early, and it's just the second entry to Nicholas Cage, Vault, you know, the final entry. And this one is Between Worlds. I had this one a while, actually. Again, built and through. There's a fine line between pleasure and pain, and Brit's got a wasp in her room, so yeah, that's why you can hear Brit shout in the background. Anyway, <laughs> as much as I would like to go and help fight the wasp, um, I've put this on and been a bit distracted. It's a 15, Nicolas Cage rocking a big mullet called Joe, rocking some tattoos, a little bit overweight. His performance is great, 
and it's the chick from Creep, also Run Lola Run, who accent just goes all over the place. You know, she's naturally French, um, and it differ devils, and then you've got the kid from King Cobras in this as well. Um, written, directed, and produced by the same person as well. And Nicolas Cage basically dealing with the death of his family, got some troubled past, and um, basically um, meets a girl whose daughter is hurt in a bike accident and uh, she likes to go to beyond the worlds between the realms and bring a, a daughter back from the dead which Nicolas Cage helps out by strangling her ends up having an affair I can't think of outside the rock where Nicolas Cage has had so much sex scenes so anyway Nicolas Cage gets it on with her moves in with her and then starts getting it on with her daughter because her daughter is Nicolas Cage's ex-dead wife Gets a bit mental. It's a bit where Nicolas Cage is just dancing around the garden, listening to Marilyn Manson, getting sprayed with a horse pipe. Get that image out of your head. Um, he then just goes mental and starts setting fire to things, and the film goes in a bit of a limbo. But not a bad film. I was saying it's not crap, um, but it's not exactly like whoa. Um, and I think the box is just Nicolas Cage's face between what it's. It could be a bit marketed better. Um, but it's all about like twisty creepy i think the girl the cast is the daughter as well she's quite sinister because it's the whole like you know i am his wife really not the daughter of your new girlfriend and it's just like where the fuck is this going but yep um as i say i picked it up dead chief for 2.99 ages ago um it was surprisingly it wasn't as bad as i expected um and i said probably there's that in the background there but yeah, uh, it's just gone there uh, nine o'clock in the morning. I've been sending Matty Connor uh, random clips of the movie as well, especially the horse pipe scene. So he'll be waking up and going, "What the fuck?" Because he never recovered after Willy's Wonderland and all that much. But yeah, bye. Okay, welcome back to the Nicolas Cage Primal. They literally put the orange light on, yellow, orange. It's right in my eyes. I can't see shit. The film has a very yellow look to it. All right multi-coloured look I'm not like me okay so um, I've had this one since the day it came out and I actually look forward to watching this one now I must have had it well over a year and just the idea of Nicolas Cage going looking for an animal and hunting but I never really read the box you know what I mean and I didn't really notice the ship so essentially this is under siege Nicolas Cage with a Jaguar not a car an animal and then I didn't realise realize it's like, oh, it says on here, die hard meat snakes on a plane. Didn't read that bit either. So there's a few snakes. Nicolas Cage has a parrot in this, which is quite funny. Um, CGI, all the animals. CGI, lion, CGI, loads of shots. A lot of fucking CGI in this. Um, quite set bound and then green screen for give it scale, you know. Um, Franklin Jensen... The hot chick from Goldeneye, also from Deep Sea Rising. Um, looks like she's had a lot of work done. Sorry to say, her cheek, she looks fucking miserable all the way through this film. A couple of years ago, my friend Sluggy met her, and you would think on a photo op she was like standing that far away from um, She looked miserable then. She looks miserable here. She just doesn't look like she wants to be in the film. Um, the creepy guy, um, who I think is Kevin Duran. He's been a lot. He's the assassin on the loose. Nicholas Cage doesn't. He looks a bit out of shape here. This it looks like zero fox given with Cage here. Um, it goes on for way too long. How long is it on for? Ninety three minutes. It felt longer than ninety three minutes. So it goes on way too long. Um, the guy as well is Michael Imperial from The Sopranos. He's been on a couple of Nicholas Cage ones recently as well. Uh, he's in this, so it looks probably the same production. Um, I forget which one it was. It might it might be one where he's creeping. Uh, Settler score was advertised on the trailer for this. So, it's pretty much a bad movie. It's not what I expected. I was devastated. I thought it was going to be like a right one to shout home about, but it's one of them. But again, got the first edition, so you get the slip cover. Um, ah, it could have been so much better. Even take out the assassin. And don't have the assassin and just being loose on the ship with a fucking Jaguar would have been enough suspense, you know what I mean? But it's obviously pushed it to like, oh, it needs to be more, it needs to be big and better. It kind of doesn't need to be. It's like Minority, minority Reports with uh, Mercury Rising with Bruce Willis. It didn't really need the action sequences just put in there because it's a Bruce Willis film and the foundation of the story was good enough. Being trapped on a ship, one person being bit, 
a few people and there's Jaguar loose is enough. But again, it's on a ship. You shut one of them doors on a ship, fucking water isn't getting in. Do you think a Jaguar is going to get through the door? So again, it's just like, oh yeah, it's having an assassin running around. But I, that's the rant. It is approximately quarter past six in the morning as well. I'm up doing some live and local videos before I go and do another live and local. So yeah, talk about burning the candle at both ends. Yep, yeah, might get another Nicolas Cage or at least start one. Quite like this light like this. Bye. Print me last resort video. Um, I started watching Grand Isle yesterday and I thought I didn't have much left to watch it. So this is Nicolas Cage, Kelsey Grammer's in here as well as a couple more people. A storm is coming. There's a the front cover there. Um, pretty much give away what the hell's going to happen at the end. This was really bad. It was weird. Um, a guy goes to fix a fence. Nicolas Cage is rocking a long mullet. Um, his wife is subduing the guy. They get locked in. There's a hurricane happening apparently. Then you know, I'm not sure exactly what happens. Nicholas Cage turns up at the end wearing a suit in a car park with his wife or something. It's a real stinger. It's a one on one, um, straight label. Um, but obviously well packaged at the front. Um, but yeah, this is bad. It just, it, it just didn't really go well. Again, it's one of the ones where the guy who's went to fix the fences just getting interviewed and like the films in like past tense and he's saying like he can we, like they're keeping people in the basements and stuff like that and it just gets weird as shit so I, i've give up that's it grand isle no oh uh, lawnmowers in the morning what sounds they make i was woken up this morning by a lawnmower bang on eight o'clock chopping down next door's 15 foot hedge Mega operation. Courtesy knock would have been alright. Oh, just knocking down the air. Uh, <laughs> just cutting down the thing. I'm full of cold. So, um, the next one, the Nicolas Cage, will be Jiu Jitsu. Um, but I haven't got there yet. Um, started watching it. Last night I watched Renfield. Now I was waiting, and maybe it's waiting to make Renfield the last entry of Nicolas Cage to go to Band What the Fox because it's his most recent film. I bought it on Monday because it's went in the 2 for 22. So I've bought um, John Wick 4, because Scott Atkins is in that, so I'm going to watch that, because Brit hasn't seen the first free John Wick, so anyway. Um, Renfield. I was going to go and see this with Two Frag and Matty Connor, um, because we had a great time when we went to see The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent, um, two years ago now. Um, so we were trying to plan another night like that. Matt was due to be in Spain, and Renfield was only on the cinema, Um briefly um, and that's one of the things about the films now they have such a brief run so we struggled uh, in a week to try and get to see that so I eventually watched it um, and while doing a jigsaw and I absolutely loved it I thought it was really funny I thought Nicolas Cage playing you know coming off the back end it is uh, Universal Studios production so Bella Lugosi in the whole the original Dracula um, and just the old filters and kind of stuff like that. And showing the story of Renfield, especially some of the shots they recreated from the original content of the original movies. And then showing the story of, like, Renfield the psychic. And the whole, like, obviously the whole, you know, there's a bit of Fight Club element there. The whole group therapy kind of thing. And I wasn't expecting the film to go in the direction it went. It's one of Nicolas Cage's best films he's put out there because it's a big budget movie. We'll get the jiu-jitsu soon, but... The special effects on this were great, and I thought Nicolas Cage was great, because this is how you use Nicolas Cage at the moment, because um, I still think putting him in a lead role in a drama, a big serious role, he'll fucking nail it. But he's not interested in that. At the minute, he's been interested about making the money um, because of whatever castle he bought. But I think with Nicolas Cage, I think he's he can act. There's no doubt about it. But he can turn up and just nail it and go. But with this, it's kind of like you've been hired for a big project and he's came in and he's just absolutely owned it. Um, laugh out loud, gory as fuck, um, full on what you go to a film to see and just have a laugh. And I think it's really well cast him because Nicholas Cage wouldn't have been needed for that long, even though he's quite a big part of the movie. Um, you know, I thought like it was just class. Um, especially like the bit where he, like, he gets to the house and he walks in. And Nicholas Cage is sitting there and he's just like, oh shit, the welcome mat. Like, 
come in, you welcome kind of thing. So the myths of the vampires and just flat out fun. But it goes back to me going like, you know, if him was alive or Feldman was on the right path, like these are films where you might have seen Reinsurgence of the Lost Boys um, because I don't see the problem. If Nicolas Cage didn't do it, if Kiefer Sutherland did it, or Jason Patrick, or another member of the Lost Boys being in it. But I really enjoyed it, and I'm just putting off the driving to work, full of cold, and being rudely awakened by the uh, fucking gardener. Oh my god. So we'll get to Jiu Jitsu when I finish Jiu Jitsu. Um, but yeah, for now, Renfield is now in, and it's a really good film. I highly recommend Renfield, and I still haven't got around to blowing the rest of me fucking things up. Random as life. Bye. <sighs> deep breath, deep breath. Okay, so, Jiu Jitsu. Fuck my life. So, from the director of Kickboxer, and he's no stranger to the good, the bad, the what the fuck's because of Van Damme, it's Kickboxer the Retaliation and Kickboxer the Return or whatever the rebirth. Uh, Alan Mussolini's in it as again, that's how you say his name. Tony Jaw, uh, Frank Grillo again. I've talked about in the Bruce Willis, he's been seen to be a name for hire, even though he is not on the front of the box, even though he's secondly billed there. Um, Nicholas Cage, he's got a samurai sword. This film is bad. It takes elements of the Predator. It's got a crab man from My Name is Earl in there. It's got the mental subtext titles bouncing around like it did in Kickboxer. The guy likes to put cameras in places that kind of work for a fast paced thing, but then repeating stuff um, and looping stuff around. There's a bit where Mussolini goes for a back kick and it just flips, and if you see it three times, you don't really need that. Tony Jar is obviously going to be like lightning, so showcasing him um, fighting and stuff like that. Um, but then this creature turns up and it's got this weird CGI face, and you think, what the fuck, man? Nicolas Cage turned him. I don't know if Nicolas Cage is in the past or present. He's a samurai, he's got long hair, rocking a bandana. I mean, this did get a Blu-ray release, um, 107 minutes, it's a long bloody movie as well. It's actually, it says Kickbox of Revelation, might be, might be completely wrong. But no, it, it's pretty, pretty stinker. Um, you can see this getting made and phases, and I think they've struggled to put this together. I think they've spent all the money on the CGI, and there's some horrible CGI in this as well. Um, Nicolas Cage, Tony Jaw, keep it in the woods, and if you want to do a martial arts epic like that, I think the sci-fi absolutely destroys this film. In but again, with Nicolas Cage, it's totally what the fuck. Nicolas Cage, jiu-jitsu, the warrior that comes every six thousand years looking for a fight. That's why he teaches him jiu-jitsu. And on the back of the box, even though it's on Nicolas Cage, the tagline is Nicolas Cage is back, and this time he's got a sword, and an alien version is knocking on the door. What the fuck? Okay, we're back with Nicolas Cage. The good, the bad, and the what the fuck. The final one for Nicolas Cage, even though I was in quite a few charity shops the last couple of days, and I asked you, I want to end up finding a Nicolas Cage film here. I actually didn't. Um, so I've actually watched two today, and I haven't got around to even reviewing the last one. So first one was Matchstick Men. Now, this is um, an exclusive Blu-ray to HMV, something I wish HMV continued on doing, because um, there's a lot of films not available. Hence, all that stuff behind us on any kind of format, so you know, get them out there. Um, so I've had it for a very, very long time. Um, Nicholas Cage, um, Sam Rockwell, Paul Ray, um, and it started and it said, um, Ridley Scott film. And obviously, you think of Ridley Scott, you think of like Aliens, Alien, um, Blade Runner, um, Gladiator, you just don't. Do see much of that, but he does dibble dabble in a lot of um drama stuff like a good year. Sorry, camera's quite heavy. Um, but I put that on, and to be honest with you, I was just like some weird flipping transitions. Um, I didn't know where it was going, the story was all over. It's about con men, um, twists and turns, and then has a I mean, it's a two hour film, and then sort of like a big twist at the end, which I like the big twist, but it felt like a long time coming. Um, Nicholas Cage was all right in it. He's playing like he's losing it a little bit. He's got some kind. He needs some pills and stuff, and he's running around, and you know, there's a bit of a scam going along there. So it's kind of like I think the film naturally doesn't let you feel like it's going to set you up for something, and um, I think the twist at the end gets you. But I think Nicholas Cage was great in it as well. Um, 
so it wasn't too bad um but again i'm not going to rush to watch it soon and then i've just watched um this one's even longer oh 111 minutes it was seven minutes shorter um leaving las vegas now nicholas cage won an academy award for this movie for best actor and no fucking shit he is absolutely amazing and i think elizabeth shoe should have got the academy award for the best actress um it's a little bit off there it's a little bit not david lynchy but it's a little bit quirky in its ways it's a long time before the intro and the title credits even start um obviously this is the on the blu-ray and it was extremely grainy um but nicholas cage playing an alcoholic and meets a prostitute and obviously elizabeth shu um hollow man back to the future replacement um cobra kai um you know she's she hot in it and you don't know which directions it's going to go and it's about finding people and to find lost in life and it's a very dark film um the, the is a message there but the message isn't like you they like, uplift and it, it's sad it's it's but if you look at Nicolas Cage in here and you think fuck me he is absolutely amazing in it and you know it's kind of like before he was the action Nicolas Cage as well so like becoming the rock after this was like some of that he wouldn't have seen coming but yeah he was phenomenal in it um to pick some good pictures of him on the back but yeah best actor nominated so hopefully the nominations were for Elizabeth Shue I think that she deserved that I mean it's based on a novel uh honestly yeah it was good it's dark it's grim it's brutal um it's got quick a little bit of quick editing here and there but um yeah, again, two solid movies, you know, Wrigley Scott directing Nicolas Cage, and then you've got, obviously, Mike Figgs directing that Academy Award winning film, and, like, to get to the very end, because this is quite a few volumes of Nicolas Cage I've done now, to get to these ones now, and you go, like, he's a top guy, the guy is a workaholic, you know, fair enough, he's buying castles and all this kind of stuff that happened to him and all that kind of thing, but you got to say, like, the guy's never stopped. In all these films you see, all these different locations, you know, turning up, doing a film and that. So I think we only have a couple of more left. I'll have to have a look under the bed and see what's next. Um, I think we might have Cowboys and Nicolas Cage playing themselves soon. So, yeah, next part of the video. I just watched the old um, Nicolas Cage, one of his more recent films, as a cowboy. I think it's the first time he's ever been a cowboy. Um, I just want to con dog about this. Um, he enjoyed it. We both watched Deadwood. Um, it's a very slow paced movie. Um, oh, thingy Bob man, from there Justifieds in it. Few familiar faces you recognise of stuff, but it's quite a slow paced movie. I mean, some westerns really do do the slow paced stuff, and it's Nicolas Cage. You know, his wife gets brutally attacked and murdered, and he has to bury her. And him and his daughter go on the trail looking for them, and you know, it's. A slow burner. Um, it's not really a great movie. It's not a bad movie. It's Nicolas Cage in the West. You know, it's pretty more I've got to give with that one. Mainly because I know I've only got one movie left of this one, unlike the Bruce Willis one where it was epic. Um, we've really flew through this one, so the last one is going to be the unbearable weight of massive talent. I am not going to dig out the uh, one sheet because I believe the one sheet is still behind Last Resort. So yeah, bye. Hello and welcome to the very end of the Nicholas Cage, the good, the bad and the what the fucks, the final what the fucks and actually well done Stephen for remembering you did some notes about this bad boy, yes I did. Right okay so the last film done dusted for this is the unbearable weight of massive talent. Now I do have the one sheet I believe it's still by me behind me lost, lost boys last resort video and I do actually own this twice. The blu-ray which I watched and the steelbook which was £35 when it first came out. So I opted not to buy it and then it just plummeted. I got this for about £11.50. Really cool cover. Like, really made the packaging effort. I think they've made the effort all the way around. Loads of Nicolas Cage's throughout his time. Weatherman, um, Conair, just Nicolas Cage. Caster Troy, yep, his face is cut around the sides. Um, Ghost Rider, Mandy. Wicker Man, he's got a bee on his head. You know, it's a really, really cool steelbook. Um, adaptation there as well. And there is Nicky fucking Cage on the back. Inside, it's 
just them guys in the water after they jump off the cliff, and that is the 4K Blu-ray, okay? I really, really like this film, and I think it's a great comeback story for Nicolas Cage. I've seen some utter shit watching his movies, mind, but I've also seen some great movies, and I've seen movies that I've just watched because they are Nicolas Cage. Now, Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent is sort of like, it's kind of what Nicolas Cage's life could be like. I don't think it's really like this. But again, he gets hired to go to a party because he's just taken all his acting jobs. The film starts with Con Air on the screen. There's loads of references all the way to him jumping in the pool and taking a massive drink of um, vodka or whatever he's drinking at the time, which is obviously uh, leaving Las Vegas reference. Um, obviously, they've got the balls and stuff from Rock. They've got Castor Troy with his guns and stuff and the film's just really really well it's like a film within a film and it really blurs the lines remember seeing this at the pictures with Condog and Two Frag absolutely loved it um, and then revisiting it just think it's absolutely hilarious and it's just a fun ride that's what it should be glad I've seen it at the pictures and again Nicolas Cage Nicolas Cage now if you haven't got it watch it the top five with one honourable mention, okay, for Nicolas Cage. Honourable mention, Frozen Ground. John Cusack, Nicolas Cage, John Cusack turning on 100% creep based on a true story about the killers, um, serial killer and stuff. It's a true story. It's creepy as fuck. I want to give a little bit of an um, honourable mention to Kiss of Death when Nicolas Cage is roided up to fuck and gorilla presses a guy out of... Uh, an 18 wheeler truck you need to see that clip it's been on the YouTube before not put it on there the stunt guy goes head first into the wheel of another truck it is a full-on gorilla press suplex throw like zero fucks given for the stunt guy and his soul is still dancing from um, the horrible um, bad lieutenant remake when he tells the big we'll keep shooting because his soul is still dancing and the camera pans along and then there's just a random guy break dancing and you think exactly what the fuck and at number five, I put National Treasure. When I got down the IMDb, I really started to struggle what I liked and what I didn't like and why I liked it and why I didn't like it. Um, and I think National Treasure, I think they should have done a third one. There's rumours of the third one. I don't think the TV series has done that well. Um, even though I don't have a lot of... I think I have more American history in me than British because of Day of the Technical. I don't seem to like... You know, I kind of liked... The conspiracy i like the treasure hunt we don't get it's like the goonies like you you want that essential adventure and i think that kind of had it and i think nicholas cage and the cast really work well together um and then obviously the second one was in britain but i think they should have done a third one i think they went off and did sorcerer's apprentice instead next one i've got deadfall only because nicholas cage is fucking brilliant and it's pick a card any card chucking cards everywhere and then has a fight with a deep fat fryer and um, charlie sheen in there michael bean Pretty bad film, it's hard to get a hold of, it has been released on DVD, um, but you could say, put that up there with Leaving Las Vegas for Nicolas Cage's performance. So there, Dead for Leaving Las Vegas in at number three, um, and that's kind of cheating in a way, but it's kind of the show you like, he was fucking wild, and then you don't have to watch the best one and go, right, you won the Academy Award for that. Look at how much fucking fun he had with that. Anyway, number three, I've got Massive Talent slash Mandy. Um, a lot of people, I like Mandy because of the score. The film's batshit crazy. It's got the neon noir kind of thing going on there. Again, it hit the ground running. But massive talent, I think it's just class. So kind of there. Number two, Face Off. I went to see that in the pictures when I was 15 years old. On my own. Shouldn't have been in there at all. But that was the craze of Broken Arrow, Hard Rain, The Rock, Armageddon, the Michael Bay, the Graham Yosh. That kind of era of movies coming off the back end of Speed. And, you know, John Revolta, um, John Woo, who obviously did Broken Arrow, um, Nicolas Cage running around, cast a try, makes no sense of cutting people's face off. They're even talking about making a fucking sequel. He's clearly fucking dead. He's clearly dead. But again, bearable weight of massive talent. You know, whatever to the times. And number one, The Rock. The Rock is Nicolas Cage's Bruce Willis's John McClane. Nicholas Cage had won the Academy Award before this. He'd been in every fucking film you can think of, from Trapped in Paradise to A Christmas Comedy to Voice in Anastasia. Or is that John Cusack? It might be A Christmas Carol. He's in somewhere like that. He's popping up there. He's trying to marry Patricia Arquette, you lucky bastard. Um, and again, along comes The Rock. 
and Michael Bay, like he did with Will Smith, just does that from an actor, like that, <laughs> like 180 of them. The Rock's class, Sean Connery, the whole conspiracy, that is James Bond, you know what I mean, Ed Harris going fucking full on psycho, the score, the, the, the app, just like it all in camera, and then Michael Bay, Coming off the back end of Bad Boys, this is like, I'll do what I want kind of film until he did Pearl Harbor and everyone's just like, mm, slow down. Like, less the love story. Stick to what you're good at. Mm -hmm. Anyway, no Con Air there. I'm not shocked a lot of people. But dinner, but maybe it's just like, put the bunny back in the box accent doesn't do it for me. Anyway, the worst films of Nicolas Cage. Honorable mention, everyone says this because everyone will say it's number one for them. The Wicker Man the bees, the whole kind of thing. Like, in the eras of fucking remakes, The Wicker Man itself is like classed as like a masterpiece, but have you ever really seen The Wicker Man? Because it's fucking batshit crazy. I've been to all locations. There's bits of The Wicker Man in this house. Watch Searching for Wicker Man on YouTube. It's six parts, all right? Me, going to Scotland. Hunting down all the locations of Wicker Man and end up finding The Wicker Man. Um, yeah. So, they tried Americana, they did a lot of stuff with that, House of Wax, you know, it was the era, you know, name, money, pay, okay, and number five, there is no number five. <laughs> there is no number four. Wicked Man's at number five then. And number four, Jiu Jitsu. Fuck me. That was in this video. I haven't recovered off that. I don't need a waffle anymore. I just have not recovered off that. Number three, Ghost of Prisoners of the Wasteland. Or the Ghost Land. It's one of the two. Um, again, coming off the back end of Mandy, the success of that. Nicholas Cage is wearing a leather suit and the next thing you know his balls are flying off and then his balls are on the floor and it's just like, what the fuck is even going on with this movie? It's fucking weird. Um, up there is number two as well, Willy's Wonderland. Because I've seen Banana Splits before this, um, Willy's Wonderland, um, just mental. Link this cage doesn't even speak in the movie. It's fucking batshit, fucking crazy. There we go, in at number five, um, um, with, um, Ghost Rider 2. Obviously, I watched that for Crystal Lambert and their fucking whole unfinished fight in the blackness. Like, fucking hell, man. Ghost Rider 1 was not bad, but the second one, fucking hell. Wendy's Wonderland, though, I'm gonna put that in there. Again, this whole crazy Nicholas Cage. And at number one, Grand Isle. Like, literally, just watch that there, and I don't know what I'm watching. Again, there's so many films, it's hard to just sit there and give it one look. But again, it's better than fuck all. And this is T. T in the outtakes. <laughs> It's late though. It is pretty late, like. Well, uh, I've had it for weeks. I just haven't had time. I've been busy. I didn't even get no look. Look, say so look. No wrapping paper, twat. Is that no wrapping paper, twat? Meaning I'm a twat, or is that like twat as in like. Both ways. Oh. You need a frame though. Just to figure that out, you know. Needs framing, preserving. Where do you get this type of stuff from? So why 